All right. I have a question for you. So if you bought XRP back in April of 2017 at seven cents, and then you watched it drop over 60% in just one day to 0.025, so two pennies and a half, 60%, what would you do? Would you sell? Would you get out of the markets? Would you have bought more back then? Now, I have another question for you, okay? Answer in the comments below. For those of you who bought XRP post lawsuit, after they made the announcement that XRP is not a security, and XRP ran all the way up to about 90, 94 cents. Let's say you bought it 94 cents. Just to watch it drop over 54%, did you sell or did you buy more? Answer that in the comments below. So, based on this, here's what I believe. And if you agree, subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna share with you more information about crypto. I talk about crypto on this channel every single week. New videos coming out because every single crypto asset in this entire industry will experience massive volatility during the adoption phase. And 99.9% .9 of the projects are gonna be wiped out and they're gonna go away. If you go on coinmarketcap.com, there's like 1.5 million now. I mean, a while ago there was like 20,000. So there's, I think there's over a million cryptocurrencies. It's crazy. And so you are going to experience max pain emotionally in these markets if you are buying when the greed is high and if you're selling when the fear is high okay these markets move off of greed and they move off of fear now they also move off of a few other things that i'm going to discuss in this video so the biggest point here is to do the opposite of what the masses do walk away from the 99 percent so the reason why the one percent are wealthy is because they just do the opposite of what 99% do. Now, obviously they educate themselves and this is not financial advice. It's not an investing advice. This is strictly for educational purposes only. So don't buy anything. Don't sell anything. Watch this for learning purposes. Okay. I'm going to share with you some major news in this video about what's happening with XRP, uh, what's happening with Bitcoin, what's happening with BRICS nations, what's happening with digital currencies moving forward. Not only, you know, we'll ripple an XRP, experience massive volatility even with adoption right here this whole market will so regardless of the greed and the fear if you're feeling bullish comment 777 if you're feeling blessed comment 777 and let's run it All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So, according to Crypto Inside UK, the XRP to Bitcoin pair reclaimed the 20 day and the 50 day moving averages. The last time this happened, it was back in 2017, and that led to an over 500% increase in the price of XRP very, very quickly. And then after that, I mean, XRP soared way, way further than 500%, and tons of other technical uh, analysis. Traders have been sharing a chart with a symmetrical triangle pattern uh, from 2017 and XRP broke out of this triangle pattern, which puts the token to new all time highs. So tons of different traders, you know, they've been predicting XRP to rally anywhere between five to $30 for this bull run cycle. And some even saying upwards of a hundred dollars. So what I'm here is to dispel some rumors, to talk about the truth and to talk about facts with you. So if we look back to 2017, why did XRP rally over 35,000% during that bull run, right? That shocked everyone. And XRP led the bull run during that time compared to 2021, you know, XRP was cut short due to the lawsuit with the SEC and it was a boot placed on it while the rest of the industry went crazy. So here was the issue. Here's the issue with only looking at the charts and only looking at technical analysis because there's two sides of the coin to look at. There's technical analysis, which is chart patterns, and then there's fundamental analysis as well too. Now, both are equally important. However, tons of people that are only into technical analysis, they try to base their predictions purely off of chart patterns of the past, but the move for XRP to the all-time high was something that no technical analysis trader could have predicted because it was so drastic, it was just a massive green candle up. You know, you can't predict that. And so the reason why it happened was not necessarily due to a chart pattern. It was due to partnerships. It was due to use case, the technology, also speculation, increased trading volume overseas in you know, countries like Asia uh, and not the United States, massive liquidity. And then also Bitcoin's four year halving cycle had a major reason to play into it, which created scarcity. And also there was lots of FOMO. There was lots of hype at the time. And so even though these technologies are amazing, blockchain technology is awesome. Distributed ledger technology is the future. And that's undeniable. You can't even question it at this point. A lot of people, you know, have hated on everyone in the crypto space for talking about blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology, saying that it's a fad, it's 
going away. And now they're realizing that that's the furthest thing from the truth. And they're starting to now get on board with it. You know, people like Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan Chase said Bitcoin's a fad. And then now he's trying to make bullish predictions for, for Bitcoin. And it's kind of like Jim Cramer, right? When he made those bullish predictions, Bitcoin actually went down. So it's kind of funny to watch that stuff. And uh, then Jim Cramer's, there's a reverse Cramer ETF. So that right there is uh, outperforming the markets. And so why would XRP and what would cause XRP to see anything close to, you know, the gains back in 2017 this time around? What would cause that? Well, let's talk about it. So the first thing is partnerships, okay? So partnerships is massive because what happened there is when Ripple partners with these big banks, which they've been doing, it spreads through the media companies owned by BlackRock. And then Ripple, you know, they've signed tons of new financial institutions to its blockchain network, bringing its clientele to well above 100 major banks and financial players in the space. You know, the number is probably much larger than 100 by now. By the time you're watching this video, you know, Ripple acquired uh, Fortress Trust, which is a Nevada-based chartered trust company with a crypto and Web3 focus. The company said in an email today, and this month, there's going to be a major announcement happening in New York at their party. And it's expected that, you know, they're potentially going to announce, you know, it could be a settlement with the SEC. It could be a uh, Ripple IPOing uh, or it could be, you know, Gary Gensler dunk tank. So we'll see what Brad Garling House says. I know if you think it's going to be a uh, Gary Gensler dunk tank at their HQ, then uh, dunk that like button, dunk the subscribe button as well, too. I think everyone would like to see that. Maybe it could be Gary Gensler resigning. You know, I know there was a prediction uh, made, you know, by uh, I think it was John Deaton who made the prediction saying that by the end of 2023, Gary Gensler could be resigning. So we'll see if that comes true. Uh, but in other words, Ripple looks more than just a hype up, hyped up company. It's more than that. Right. So it's the hype is awesome. It helps. But if that's all that moves something, then the fundamentals are lacking. Right. Hype. This, I've said this before. Hype in marketing is what drives the market. And then fundamentals and utility is what's going to keep the projects around long term. So that's the main thing to look at. Right. With rather than just, you know, altcoins or, you know, a company hyping up an altcoin, boasting some disruptive technology while actually achieving very little. So Ripple's been achieving a lot. XRP, you know, it's been achieving a lot. And in total, Yahoo Finance estimates now more than 75 banks partnered with Ripple. So obviously the number is going to keep going up from there. And as far as technology goes, Ripple just increased the XRP ledger transactions. This is big, guys. They increased the transactions per second from 1,500 to over 3,400. So over a double. They just doubled it. It was already fast enough. Compare that to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's transactions per second is seven. So what that means is just the speed at which it can be sent. And so seven versus 3,400. It's a big difference, right? So for banks, people saying that banks are going to use Bitcoin for cross-border payments is completely out of the question unless they are idiots, right? They would use distributed ledger technology, XRP ledger with Ripple. Now, would they use XRP or not? That right there is what we need to talk about. So the tech of behind Ripple, right? XRP ledger, the ledger, the distributed ledger technology is better than Bitcoin for actual use case rather than just being a store of value like gold. You know, XRP is being used for payments. So that increases the trading volume when it's used for cross-border payments. Now I'm bullish on Bitcoin too. I hold Bitcoin. I hold XRP. I hold Ethereum. You know, I'm bullish on Bitcoin, but the technology, I'm more bullish on the technology behind XRP than I am on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just a no brainer, right? It's number one, it's the first one. It's gonna, it's gonna grow with the whole industry grows. So speculation of the Bitcoin four year having cycle is what everyone's waiting for as well too, because historically, you know, after Bitcoin halves, the perception of scarcity increases and the demand skyrockets for the whole industry, which creates massive FOMO, massive liquidity to flow into the markets after that having event takes place. And that's gonna be in 2024. So if you're wondering, why hasn't XRP passed its all-time high with the good news about the lawsuit and all these partnerships and you know the hype around that? Why did it just go up and then it came right back down? And why does Bitcoin's having matter for XRP at all? Why does it matter for XRP? So those are some good questions. And the answer for those is why does Bitcoin grow after the halving? Well, it's obviously scarcity, supply and demand, really simple, but it's also based on how the wealthy invest. Okay? The wealthy, what they do is one word, keyword here to memorize, memorize pretty easy to understand, but most people don't do it because they get too bullish on one thing. And so, you know, when I talk about XRP and some people are like, yeah, that's the only project that, that they hold. No, they diversify, right? Diversify. 
And so they diversify through what? Through hedge funds, through portfolio capital companies, all the VCs, all the wealthy people give their money to these companies. And what the companies do is they put them into the top projects in industries rather than one project by itself. So, you know, that's why the saying, when the tides rise, so do all ships, is true for the crypto market. The problem is, you know, when the tide rises, well, all ships rise, but the projects that won't weather the storm when the tide goes out, wipes out most ships and wipes out most investors that are on the wrong ships. So being diversified on the right ships is a key for capital preservation. And so the reason why XRP hasn't passed its all time high is because there isn't enough liquidity also in the industry yet. So the whole market moves off of liquidity, right? Tides is money, liquidity is money, market cap through big companies, big investors, big institutions. It's still only around a trillion dollars, which is not a lot of money for how much money's out there. You know, the derivatives market is what? Like 200 trillion, 300 trillion. How much money is in that? How much debt is the United States in right now? So the whole world is propped up off of debt, liquidity, debt, liquidity, and loans and all that stuff, right? And so that's why the government was buying bonds. Now they've been tightening. And so there isn't enough liquidity to flow into this industry right now. So with Ripple also, releasing more XRP into circulation from their escrow, it's going to take a, you know, I believe it would take a larger market cap, right? To pass its all time high because there's more in circulation uh, in the circulating supply. And uh, with the market demand out there not being that high with what the Fed's doing, well, the Fed still needs to decide their next move with what they're going to do with interest rates. And they're still going to keep going up this year. And so what would catapult the next bull run, right? When would that happen? And I believe It'd be a combination of ETF approvals in mass, right? With BlackRock, Fidelity, spot Bitcoin ETFs. When that happened, similar to gold back in 2004, gold went on a massive bull run. Also the Fed easing again and adding to their balance sheet. Now the issue, the issue with that is the Fed may only do that after some economic catastrophe where they're forced, their hand would be forced to ease and they'd be forced to put money and buy the bonds, be bank failures, more bank runs coming for the smaller regional banks and then for them to save the system by putting more money as they always do. That's always their default is print, right? Versus figuring out another solution, getting people to, you know, <laughs> getting people to change their spending habits not going to happen. So they're just going to print more. And until that happens, Right? Until that moment happens where they start printing more, they're going to keep raising rates until 2024 at each of their FOMC meetings. So at every single one of those FOMC meetings, I'm expecting a 25 basis point rate hike until the end of the year. And so regardless, you know, Ripple and XRP, it's going to be around long term. So being patient, it sucks. It's not fun. It teaches you important lessons. But patience always pays long term if you're in the right projects. So that's going to be big, guys. That's going to be big. So my take on it is you just got to hang tight, man. You got to focus on creating passive income and don't worry about the volatility. Don't worry about the volatility in the short term. When in doubt, zoom out. So in other crypto news, let's zoom out even further, even more macro, right? Visa is going to increase its experiments using Circle's USDC to improve the speed of their cross-border payments. And we'll begin uh, sending USDC to select merchants via the Solana blockchain in a newly announced pilot that they just came out with, which is kind of goofy in my opinion on why Solana, because you know the SEC is targeting Solana, saying it's a security. Even though that doesn't mean it's a security, why would they choose a company? Maybe they know something that, that we don't know. Maybe they know something I don't know. They definitely do. I think the SEC is just on a rampage right now, which is crazy. Why wouldn't they do XRP? Why would they go for on the Solana blockchain? Because if the SEC is targeting Solana, saying it's security, well, Visa wanted to get bigger adoption, then in my opinion, they should have gone on the XRP ledger because there's already clarity there and they would have more support because XRP gets more people interested in it. And liquidity is moved based off, off of search volume too on Google. So you can use keyword research tools and I do a lot of that stuff so I can help you guys with keyword research and understanding that. That's how you understand where trends move. And so uh, the main thing to understand that's taking place right now, regardless of which project these companies, you know, like Visa, you got MasterCard, American Express, PayPal, or, you know, Twitter's X, you know, whatever payment providers or cryptocurrencies they're choosing in this space to partner with. Well, it's very, very likely that XRP will be a major player in the majority of them. And so also, this whole industry is going to keep growing over the next decade because they want the market shared. So they're partnering with these companies, just like the early days of the dot-com boom. So just because you might not 
understand what all this technology is and you hear all these terms like layer one, layer two, DeFi, uh, you know, then you got inner ledger protocol, distributed ledger technology, and you're like, how is all this gonna work? Like there's all these banks in all these countries, like how are they gonna all work together? And it's difficult to understand. And it's kind of like predicting, predicting the future. Where's the crystal ball here? We gotta look at the facts, right? So it doesn't mean that you should completely write it off if you don't understand something. And it also doesn't mean you need to understand everything about it, you know, to get wealthy. You just gotta understand timing and adoption. It's not the smartest people that get wealthy. It's those that are the most equipped with resources and time and timing, right? And timing and having capital to be able to put in projects at the right time. And so I'm not gonna tell you to buy it. I'm not gonna tell you to sell it. It's up to you, but I'm gonna give you the facts. For example, you know, if we look at the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, right? They are timing the decline of the dollar by expanding right now to include six new member countries, Argentina, Ethiopia, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, among other countries requesting approval to join. And so the BRICS now represents nearly 29% of the world's GDP. So when they confirm their plans for their new currency and what it's gonna be backed by to rival the petrodollar, it's gonna create a wave of adoption. And oil uh, production within BRICS increased significantly after the expansion with the group's share rising from 20.4% to 43%, over 43%. So Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Iran are among the top 10 oil producing countries among the new BRICS members. So the petrodollar, petroleum dollar, is gonna face some major headwinds with the Petro One as China's influence grows and as China starts brokering deals for petroleum in the one. And so because the dollar was taken off the gold standard and it was backed on petroleum and that's why we're over there, right? To force power through war and all that stuff and then have oil. That's why the price of oil skyrocketed, you know, and that's why it's a war for oil. Well, what is China doing? They're making some major power moves right now during the beginning stages of World War III, right? We're not at the kinetic war yet of nukes being dropped, but Elon Musk just actually posted that he had to say no to escalating to World War III. They asked him to turn on or Starlink to try and sink Russian ships. And so while people are focused on the football games coming up, oh, we could have gone into World War III, but Elon Musk said no. So I'm curious on your guys' thoughts on that. So that's absolutely crazy. So the BRICS nations, you know, with the original members, we go back to this, contributing to about 18.28% of global exports of goods and services. You know, when we talk about uh, World War III closing down global exports, it would just cause a massive crisis in the world. So the next crisis that would come would either be World War III, China invading Taiwan, something happening with Russia, Ukraine, United States, um, or it would be another pandemic, uh, another pandemic. So that way, you know, who knows what would happen there, close down uh, economies and force people back in lockdown mode. And so there's documents coming out. I don't know how true they are, how untrue they are, but Alex Jones, who was removed from social media, is starting to share this type of stuff, guys. So rather than me talking about rumors and stuff, I just want to talk about facts, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. The main thing is China is a major contributor to global exports within the BRICS nations, accounting for 12% global exports. So the population uh, share of the BRICS in the world also increased from 40% to 46% due to the expansion of adding new countries. And when you look at the population size compared to the United States, it is absolutely crazy, right? India and China are among the largest nations, obviously, with about 1.4 billion, I, think, I believe it's 1.2 or 1.4 billion people each, you know, Ethiopia and Egypt among the new members have significant populations as well. And you compare that to less than less than 400 million in the United States, the BRICS vastly outnumbers the US by population as well too, and the rise and fall of empires and America's an empire like Rome, like back in Greece, right? So this is important because the expansion of the BRICS with these six new countries increased its global influence in terms of GDP, oil production, exports, population share, among other things. And the reason why, you know, they're teaming up is because these countries, these countries want to strengthen their local currencies and economies to protect against more potential U.S. sanctions because the U.S. can sanction any country they want that need oil. And also to protect themselves for inflation, once Jerome Powell goes burr on the printing press and starts printing more money. So China and Russia may use their gold reserves to support a new currency as an alternative to the US dollar, which could explain why their central banks have been buying more gold than ever before. 
and accumulate more precious metals. On top of that, the China Belt and Road Initiative, which is the largest infrastructure project in history, you know, is going to require massive amounts of precious metals, you know, silver, steel, you name it. So machinery. So just look into that in terms of investing diversification. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in s silver, real silver, physically holding it, not ETFs, not paper trading it, physically holding it because you know, if we go into a crazy pandemic situation, if it gets full blown Armageddon mode, like the Simpsons is predicting, then you'll be bartering with precious metals, tobacco, alcohol. You'll be bartering. You'll have need to have land, water, food, the important stuff. Right. And then crypto, they're working in offline CBDCs through the Bank for International Settlements. Uh, one of their projects, it's either Project Meridian, Project Icebreaker, or uh, Project Polaris, there's a bunch of them. They have like 10 plus different projects that they're working on. One of them is for offline CBDCs in case of, case of EMP attacks, power outages. So why would the central bank of central banks be preparing for EMP attacks and power outages? Maybe they're preparing for World War III. I don't know, could be a conspiracy. Who knows, maybe the Bank of, for International Settlements that tells the Federal Reserve of the United States what to do. Doesn't know what they're talking about, man. I don't know, just go to their website, check it out for yourself. Also. The high real yields on the U.S. 10-year treasuries in 2023 are prompting interest in alternative currencies as well. So in one of my previous videos, I discussed the 10-year treasury yield to the two-year treasury yield and their inversion uh, rate right now and why the worst is yet to come for the economy once that flips to the positive. So you need to prepare now and you need to prepare daily. You know, some people even ask me, like, why do you have the word prepare now in all the titles of the video? And the answer is simple, right? You don't prepare in one day. You don't prepare in one day. You do daily preparation. Daily preparation is the best prevention of an economic hardship for you, your friends, your family. So share this video ASAP. Share this video ASAP out there because Australia, China, and Russia are the top gold producers. And they reportedly, the central banks are stockpiling gold. They're stockpiling gold. So pay attention to what central banks are doing. Pay attention to what the big banks are doing, the massive companies. Pay attention to what BlackRock's doing. Even if you don't like these companies, just pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. Russia will assume BRICS chairmanship in 2024, raising expectations of a significant currency-related announcement coming soon. So we'll be on the high, high alert high alert for that. Urgent alert, man. Sound the alarm. It's happening. Russia is actively promoting de-dollarization incentives with the BRICS, including secure payment instruments and they're working on their payment network as well too and with the war in ukraine russia is going to do whatever they can to you know try and lower the power of the u.s ray dalio says there's three types of wars there's a currency war there's trade war and then there's kinetic war the trade war that's been going on for a while the currency war, war that's definitely happening the last step is kinetic war now we hope it doesn't turn to that because a kinetic war would be like end of the world man i mean you look at back back at the last war there were only two nukes now how many nukes are there all these countries are bragging. I think Russia's got some of the most nukes. So that's that's not good, right? There's there's over a thousand nukes or something like that. What's the number? Let me know in the comments below, right? But it's crazy. It'll just end the world. Probably set off Yellowstone or something like that. So the most important thing right now, get right with God, get close with your family. And as always, we're backing up our truck all the way to the bank, grabbing the bags, packing them, stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because the spending power of the dollar continues to go down in value. That's a fact. Blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology is going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, we're all going camping on the beaches of the moon. I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do. Stay bullish.